So, uh, hi everyone, I'm Chris uh, Treganos. I'm thrilled to be at TalkAbot. I uh, moved to Austin in January and I feel like tonight represents like, I can no longer say I'm new to Austin, so I have to kind of get over it. Um, the, my favorite meetup in town is TalkAbot. So I work at Message.io and we've been working on a ton of tech for, for about a year now uh, that we haven't really given a developer talk on one, what the heck we're doing, and also uh, enterprise chat, it's, it's pretty broad, it's very complex, but the opportunity as like a, a developer or a startup trying to build a product to sell to paying customers, it's a huge opportunity. And so I have a lot more info on these slides than I'm gonna get out tonight. And so what I'm thinking is the end, I have like really detailed like API calls that you can make across different um, platforms and I'll just provide these slides to anyone who wants at the end. So I will skip over some uh, so that I keep you engaged and interested. So I work at Message.io. So previously uh, I ran the developer platform at Evernote for a really long time and then uh, at Roku uh, in San Francisco. So I moved to Austin in January and previously like I started working at Message.io in October. And so we're trying to solve the problem of uh, we want, whether it's messaging or whether you're a chatbot developer, we have technology that enables you to build a chatbot uh, or a chat application and then have it work across all different platforms. We do that a couple different ways. The primary way we've been working with developers such as Kayak and Dribble and a lot of chat bots that are on Slack and Microsoft Teams is they actually send, let's say they built their app for HipChat, they'll send their API requests to Message.io and we're able to in real time translate that to any other platform. And so I think tonight I'm gonna to go through the major enterprise chat platforms. Um, I think a lot of you probably haven't used them unless your boss or your CIO said you must use this platform. So I'll try to give like a primer on all of them. I'll quickly go through the differences between their APIs. And then also at the very end, our, our team has actually been working really hard this week on a, a new project, a new product that we're giving everyone to talk about access to. And so we'd love your feedback, uh, kind of show that at the end. Yeah, I'm pretty excited, a little nervous, but. All right, so uh, conversational apps. So uh, I have learned when working with chatbot developers, I might say, hey, you, tell me about your chatbot. And they're like, no, no, no. I am a SaaS product that has a notification. I am not a chatbot. Like, okay, so I changed the messaging on the website. And then I'm like, we're, we're a notification app. They're like, no, 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 that has nothing to do with me. I'm a chatbot. So I'm just saying conversational apps in my head are a couple of different things. Uh, you get web hooks, right? So you have a product somewhere else. It's sending you pings, you know, Slack and a lot of these platforms are really good at taking events happening in the real world and bringing it where you're working. Um, chatbots, which uh, Botmock was a great example of like designing a conversation. So through natural language, you're trying to talk back and forth with the service. Great use cases for customer support. Um, a lot of companies are actually starting to do that through Twitter. So like you at sign Comcast, they were one of the first, right? It's actually, the majority of that now is just natural language AI. And so that's like a huge cost saver for companies. And then lastly is slash command. So anyone, you know, that's in uh, command line interface in the past, this is like very power user, like direct commands to trigger off some type of workflow. And so typically whatever you call your app, let's say, let's say conversational apps, that has to route through some platforms API. And so most common, I would say most apps that I've seen are built for Slack um, or they've built their own platform. They're sending their request to Slack or HipChat or Microsoft Teams API. And then the way that actual customers and actual users interact with it is through smart notifications. Uh, so little prompts, sure, back and forth chat, we call it like a bot user conversation. And then sometimes it's just um, notification, I call them smart notifications, but you might get a ping and you might be able to take like an, an action like accept or reject. It's kind of a little bit beyond a webhook, like a little bit beyond a notification. And so, for the majority of people that work for large companies, the company picks the chat platform. So anything that you deal with confidentiality, any company that is not okay with the idea of bring your own tech to work. Um, Slack's been really good, like a lot of Slack success has been uh, knowledge workers at company saying, we need to get stuff done and email's not cutting it, so we're gonna bring Slack into the workplace and then it becomes official later. Microsoft, Cisco, um, Atlassian are all trying to catch up, right? So they're all trying to, you know, uh, your company, a lot of companies pay for Jira, project management software. A lot of companies pay for Office 365. And so the opportunity for all these massive enterprise companies is 
you're already paying for their tech, and then the chat component is just an extra feature. Um, so their goal is trying to convince uh, CIOs particularly to, to, to actually deploy their chat, pl chat platform versus something else. And so I think when you're building a conversational app, one of the biggest things I've seen working with bot developers is they kind of go in all, they go all in on one platform, right? So they have invested months of time and they're like, we are the stand-up, we're the agile sprint bot for Slack and all our authentication is Slack. Or maybe they're like, we're an extension for HipChat. And then that first time they, they try to go to another platform, they've kind of gone all in. Their identity is kind of tied to a platform and then they're cooked. There's a lot of like undoing of work uh, to then make themselves be a product that is sold across multiple companies. And so I think it's just key like, to understand these different platforms, why you might be interested in building for one of these uh, chat platforms, and just the kind of uh, nuances between them all. I won't go through this now, but essentially, if I was to summarize it, and you can go through the slides later, in 2010, HipChat came out. HipChat got acquired actually in uh, 2012, but essentially it's been about seven years that we've had enterprise-focused messaging, kind of beyond email. And so beginning in 2010, you have that. And leading this last year has been incredible in terms of new platforms. You've got Facebook Workplace. You've got Google working on a secret new chat platform that's probably coming out soon. You've got Atlassian just announcing the, the, the successor to HipChat. It's called Atlassian Stride. You've got Slack really fighting tooth and nail to release some awesome new features that customers are begging for. So the enterprise chat wars is alive and well. And these, this last year, you have the remaining mass of enterprise companies releasing their products for customers. I will not attempt to read this. Uh, if I could summarize the thing that I think is interesting is of all these different pricing points, Slack has about one, they have about 1,200 third-party integrations in their app store. Some of their apps, if you go there, uh, actually are broken. So their app store has probably more apps than are functional. But other than that, you have maybe 200 in HipChat. Um, you have about 80 in Skype. Microsoft Teams is right about 30. Like Ben kind of showed you, it's still very much in beta. And so there's developers that went all in on one platform, and now they're like, oh, we need more customers. How do we get on everywhere else? And so that kind of kicked off about a year, year and a half ago. We started an exploration of... How do these platforms, how are they alike and how are they similar? And so we start at the base level, right? So all these chat platforms, they have users. Most of them support the concept of bots. Whether a user or a bot, you can chat in what typically all of them call a channel. Some of them might call a room. And then it gets a little um, fuzzy when you get to the top level. So if you're Microsoft, you've had years of thinking about really large enterprises. So you have channels, which is just within teams. But then Microsoft's like, yeah, so Coca-Cola is a company uh, that we service. So we need a, a, a larger hierarchy called um, a tenant. And so let's say Microsoft Teams, it, you're trying to figure out how to use it. If you're in a like 50,000 person company, Microsoft Teams might be easier for you to navigate than say a Slack, uh, which is you have a team, it works pretty well for 100 to 300 people. But beyond that, it might get a little crazy. And so all these products, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is designed for the use case that they were built for. And I'll go specifically through each one. So at its, at its base minimum, if, as a developer, if I'm trying to decide what platforms I should deploy to, I gotta be able to send a message, right? So I have to have the ability at least one way to send a message. You could argue one way, it's just a notification. And then I need some type of CRUD, like create, create, update, delete functionality. Um, the most common request, which I'll show in a moment, is the ability to list users in a team the ability to check a user's email to make sure they're already paying for my service outside of chat. And then some of the nice to haves is formatting. So most people expect a certain level of formatting when they're talking back and forth. And events, I think this uh, events is a, a big shift you've seen in the last year and a half where platforms should be telling a bot developer through a ping that certain activities are happening versus a bot developer constantly checking chat rooms to see if actions have happened. And so event-driven applications is a really important change so that developers, when they get pinged on an action, then it kicks off a workflow. And so this is one of many slides that I will save for everyone to look later. But I think what's important here is um, if you think about building an app that's abstracted from all the different platforms, uh, 
we've been calling them unified messaging intents, but or definitions. But the way we think of it is, regardless if it's a send mess, uh, uh, chat dot post message in Slack, or if it's an update conversation in Microsoft, as a developer, there's actions you're trying to take, right? So we're trying to prioritize that. So at the top, like the most critical is I have to be able to send a message. I mean, we've kind of named them ourselves, but just focus on the description. We argue that everything, you know, these 20 or so are must-haves for platforms. So the ability to get uh, info about a team. You know, if, you, if you're an app and you get dropped into a team, you have to know what's the context I've been dropped in. Does this company pay for my service? Is this a pro user? Is this a beginning user? The ability to create a channel. And so a lot of times enterprise platforms like, oh, we don't want this bot to come in here and start spamming anyone. And so a lot of the enterprise platforms err on the side of not giving a developer any access. And then what's the point, right? It's just like a back and forth chat. It doesn't have functionality. And so when we work with developers and then the other part of our team, we work really closely with the platform. So we're advising them on um, if you had these 40 API calls and features, that would enable you to get 80% or more of the developers to actually care enough or be interested enough to join your platform. And so Slack, uh, how many people use Slack? Okay, so I expected. Um, super developer friendly, they really compete on features. And so Slack has been really paving the way between that blend between conversation and UI, whether it's drop downs, whether it's interactive messages, uh, advanced formatting, Slack is going to be the leading platform currently for integrating with most people. Their whole day is spent inside Slack. Um, if you're a developer, it's just api.slack.com. Getting a key is free. Um, most people know Slack. I don't think I need to explain it. Um, I'll save these slides for later, but they have really rich support for every thing you could use in their platform. So let me rephrase that. They've essentially exposed the API that they use to build Slack the app. They've exposed that to developers. And that, that's what we love to see is a developer should be able to add a reaction to a comment, set your status message. Um, all these things that many of the other platforms haven't got comfortable enough to give you access to. Slack's like, no, developers and platform extend our product and help us sell more of Slack into accounts. Formatting, who could ever read this? But basically, they support a ton of formatting, uh, whether it's markdown, whether it's rich text, whether it's attachments, file uploads. Um, all the other platforms were begging them, hey, please support what they support. Um, and events, they've, Slack made a huge shift um, about a year ago to go from real-time messaging, so it's just like back and forth socket, like you're constantly polling for changes in a conversation to let Slack send you the developer events, right? So Slack wants to send you events and then have you respond to them. Uh, it's, it's a lot more efficient of a way to use their API. Um, Microsoft Teams, Ben covered a lot of actually the UI. I think if I was to summarize why I think it's interesting is Office 365 is 90 million monthly paying active customers. And so we have developers that haven't built for Microsoft Teams yet, but they're already getting paying customers because they have an Active Directory sync, or they have an Office 365 calendar sync. And so uh, when you're dealing with, like a, with a Microsoft, they have these massive conferences like Microsoft Ignite or Envision where they bring CIOs from all these different companies to show up and just be demoed by startups and from companies of services that they should purchase and add on to their Office account. And so if you're a developer building a product, companies like a Microsoft and Cisco have sales teams that are dying for more apps to show off to prospective Microsoft customers. And so the, the interests are really aligned. They want to sell Office, and typically when they close a massive deal with a very large company, they're convincing that company to add on additional services for their workflow. A lot of developers would love to be one of those add-on services. This Microsoft Teams, Ben showed that. Super limited functionality. Um, so they definitely are very much in beta. You can, you can send back and forth messages. You can update a message now. You can create a conversation, but super limited. So if someone attaches, if you're a bot developer and someone attaches a file, guess what? You don't have access to their Active Directory or their OneDrive. You can't view it. So there's a lot of things that uh, Microsoft is working incredibly fast to add feature parity. Um, in the last two quarters, they've added a ton new um, uh, support, but it's a work in progress. Um, in events, I, yeah, I think we go through that. 
So how many people have used HipChat before or know of HipChat? Okay. So HipChat was the first enterprise chat platform. A lot of companies like HipChat because it's secure, it's safe, you have to pay for it. It's pretty locked down. They just announced the successor, which is called Atlassian Stride. It's free. Video conferencing is free. Anyone can join. Uh, we met them in San Francisco last week, and the way they're thinking about it is Stride is going to be the head-on competitor with Slack. And so it's very extensible. You can build a third-party app, and it will be baked right into their UI. You can replace their, their native video tool. You can integrate your calendar app. And they're thinking of HipChat as their on-premise solution. So Atlassian is one of those rare companies that invests very heavily in cloud tech, but also they have a ton of customers that pay for on-premise solutions. And so that's how they're, they're actually going to keep both alive. And this is for on-premise. Like, I don't want my chats to go outside of this building, so we're going to install a hip chat server inside our company, and that stuff's not going anywhere. Stride is pretty robust, um, but it's probably hosted on some third-party uh, service. They just released it, they just launched it, and they just released the docs, and you can sign up to get early access to, uh, to Stride. Um, this is what it looks like, very Slack-ish or Microsoft Teams-ish. You get rooms, you get channels, you can kick off conversations right in there. Um, I'm probably like super over, but all right, I'll keep going. Okay, okay, good. Um, so HipChat, they haven't done a lot with formatting, so I actually feel like they're format. they don't have rich cards, they don't have carousels, a lot, their formatting has been lacking for me personally, uh, but they have a lot of API methods. And so with HipChat, you could send and receive, you can create channels, but they never let you at sign a bot user before. And so uh, meeting the Atlassian team, they were showing us this new tech. They were super excited. They were like brand new platform, totally different. The, mo the thing I got the most excited about is I could actually at sign a platform and get a ping back. There, there was workarounds, but this is the first time where they're acknowledging bot, first person bot users is, is a priority for them as a platform. Um, Atlassian pays developers. And so that's like also a huge difference is there's a lot of companies that their entire company makes all their money from selling third party Atlassian uh, extensions for other products. So a lot of the developers we work with that are on HipChat also have a Jira extension. So it can like add um, smart tasks. It can take, make actionable tasks from Jira comments or Bitbucket, that's like their GitHub equivalent. It's like uh, pre uh, secure uh, Git hosting. You can set off actions. So a lot of the companies we know, they haven't integrated with HipChat, but the Atlassian ecosystem has paid like hundreds of millions of dollars out to developers. And so that's another one where you're trying to get new paying customers. Atlassian's, uh, we went to their developer conference and it was super focused on the third party companies that can help them make their products more useful. And I actually, I love that because that makes your interests align with the platform. Um, Google Hangouts chat. Who has heard of Google Hangouts chat? Okay. So it isn't Google Hangouts. This is a new product that they've pre-announced, um, date to be determined. Uh, you can go, you can just Google Google Hangouts chat and re request early access to, to see the product. It's, the date's 2BD. I can show a public photo that they've shared. <laughs> so this is, what, this is what they've shared in their recent blog post. Also very like head-to-head -head competition with Slack. The opportunity there is uh, Google Chat is baked right into G Suite. So if, you have, if, you're, if you're a company, if you're a startup, and you're trying to sell your product into a company that's running on Google, Google for Work or G Suite, Google Chat is just integrated with that. So this is actually the old Hangouts API that's all deprecated, and it's going to be uh, the, the URL where you can even request access is chat.google.com. Um, pretty rich formatting, pretty rich cards. I can't talk anymore about it, but it's, um, I think it's going to be, given that it's an entire ecosystem, it's going to be very interesting for startups looking to get included in larger accounts in enterprise. Cisco Spark, so I find a lot of times, so we got, we got our sponsors, lots of Cisco Spark guys. Um, they acquired a couple companies. So they acquired a Twilio, one of Twilio's top competitors, Tropo, and they acquired another company. So the Cisco Spark is very flexible, free video conferencing and chat tool. The best way I like to tell people is think of it as is it's their successor to WebEx. And so a lot of the WebEx functionality, which I think people have had to install WebEx, for past business meetings, 
Cisco Spark is a lot easier way to get into using uh, chat for Cisco. They're very clear about their motives. Cisco, uh, I think at South by Southwest, Jose, um, their CTO announced, they are all in on meetings, audio and video, messaging supports the sale of really high quality video conferencing solutions. And so when we've met the Cisco team uh, many times, we know them really well, they've said they've had a lot of success at, they have conferences where their top customers come in and decide what add-on products to buy. And their Cisco sales team does very well when they have extra third-party apps, uh, developers to show off. And so people that build extensions for their video tool, extensions for their chat tool, that's like a really good opportunity. Their events are like 100,000 people, massive conferences. Like when you're buying video conferencing for all of, uh, let's say, GE, or you're buying video conferencing for like a hospital network, you're dealing with Cisco. You're not, I mean, Zoom is actually working really good, but you're buying both the software and the hardware, even including like a subcontractor to, that's a Cisco specialist to install messaging and video in this place, right? So it's kind of a, a lot of us don't deal with that stuff, but it's a, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And they're very apt to having add-on services. So it's just developer.ciscospark.com. Their API is pretty robust, uh, pretty robust. I actually like dealing with their API. It's very, um, it has a lot of the priority things that we'd expect. And they have pretty decent formatting. We'd like to add them, we'd like them to add some more cards and um, carousels and rich text type attachment features. But um, so far it's pretty decent parity. Who's heard of Mattermost? So, I first ran into Mattermost. Uber announced. Uh, Uber had a, blog, a tech blog post where they announced their chat platform. So, like, they're like internally, we have a chat platform that's half chat, half DevOps. We're calling it UChat. And when I read through the announcement, I noticed a trend that I've seen already is Uber. Mattermost is like almost like an open source Slack. It's like a very secure. It's built on Go and React, and a lot of companies use it to have like an on-premise chat solution especially for companies that are, that are very into auditing and security. So a lot of companies build their own chat platforms running off Mattermost. And so it's very extensible. IT, typically how I've seen it is a CIO will say, we're using Mattermost, we're gonna customize it to our company's needs, our internal workflows. And there's usually one to three developers on staff that manage it. So they kind of know every single thing that's coming in and out of that. That's really important, say if you're a bank, say if you're um, a, a large company that has lots of uh, crazy tech, right? So we've heard matter most increasingly when companies say, it's, if, if you're sending our messages off to AWS or off to Google App Engine, it's a non-starter for us. And so that's sometimes in enterprise the first question is my message going through any other tech that I don't know about? If yes, they're probably gonna go with a hip chat on premise or a Mattermost. That's what it looks like, it's basic chat. Um, and the last thing I'll talk about, uh, actually almost done here, I'll talk about Workplace by Facebook. Facebook took a lot of their tech and internally, like when you're a Facebook employee, your Facebook is also your company intranet. I've seen it, it's really trippy. So like your Facebook, your newsfeed, is a mixture of your friends posting photos and it's like your meeting updates and notes. And so uh, that's like no boundaries there. I don't know how I feel about that, but they took that core tech. Um, they got a lot of user research that said, employees at companies don't mind using a newsfeed, but they do not want at work to connect their Facebook account. So Facebook Workplace is a total clone of the Facebook newsfeed, groups, channels, and kind of a clone of Facebook Messenger. It's called Facebook Work Chat. It's a separate iPhone app uh, that is just back and forth messages with your team. It's really low cost. And so they're going after that mid market of, actually a lower market of it's low cost. Say you're a coffee shop or a small business and you need to post, you need like a, an intranet to post like the team's uh, staff schedule that week or news and announcements or maybe, maybe you're uh, a real estate firm and every one of the brokers need to post photos of some broken window at a property. Workplace is a pretty decent solution that can be literally free or it's like two bucks a month for the pro version. Um, they are focusing more, less on back and forth messaging and more of like posts with threaded comments. Um, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's work.facebook.com. 
And this is actually, we zoomed it in so it looks a little whack, but this is actually a screenshot of our, we wrote a, a, our, our workplace. So we use it internally just like as a water cooler. Half our team is uh, in Europe, in Russia. And so it actually helps us kind of like post photos. And uh, especially if you're remote, it helps. It's really hard to be intentional in a small startup about everyone feeling connected and knowing what's going on. Uh, so that is the exhaustive list of enterprise chat platforms. Um, all right, so now, let's see how this goes. It's probably going to break. But we've been working on, so all this tech of like, how does one platform work with another? How does Cisco Spark interact with Slack? How does Microsoft Teams work with like SMS, text message? And one of the fundamental things that I personally have to deal with is uh, if someone wants to contact me, chat platforms are fundamentally designed for people that are paid by the same employer, but that's, that's not how we work, right? So uh, with this tool we built is someone might be on another chat platform. Someone might be um, on another Slack account. And so this thing we're going to show you guys now would allow you to literally add me into your Slack. Um, I, look up, I, I look like I'm a bot, and I can only talk directly to an individual person. Um, but this is kind of the beginning of some tech that's built on our core engine. And so uh, for the first time, it's called m.io slash beta. And kind of two ways you can start using it. So first, like literally, if you want me to chat with you, I'm in my own chat platform, but I will get messages as if you're in my Slack or my hip chat or my whatever. Uh, if you just go to my URL, which is chris.m.io, it's going to say, for now, it'll say, uh, add to Slack. You say, do you, are you okay with Chris being an individual person in your Slack? I can only talk direct message to whoever accepts it. And then you start chatting with me, and I'm, I'm literally just in my Slack account, just having a direct message with you. Um, if you're interested in using it for yourself, so like literally, like if anyone's interested, like add me, and I will just, I'll be chatting with anyone who wants to. I'll even give you the slides. I guess that'll be, if you want the slides, chat with me and I'll send you the link. Um, secondly, if you want to try it out for yourself, so say you want uh, ben.m.io and you want people, you can talk to people over email um, and over Slack and we're adding a ton more platforms. So imagine that, that chris.m.io having a, you know, talk to me anywhere that you'd like to talk to. You can just set it up for yourself also at m.io slash beta. Um, and then that actually enables you to create your own m.io account and so yeah so we'd love to love to see what you think and i'm going to be around at last or i'd love to walk anyone through it um we've been working super heads down it's been a fun fun project a little bit different than uh some of the bot stuff we've been doing so uh that's all i got thanks for letting me go over